Hello students. Welcome back to my channel, The Goddess of Econ. Today's lecture will cover the derivation process for the modified duration formula. This requires some basic knowledge in calculus, so if you are somewhat familiar with finding derivatives and partial differentiation, please follow, follow me. As can be seen here, the modified duration of a bond is defined as negative 1 over p times partial derivative of p with respect to r. This is a calculus version of the basic definition of modified duration. Needless to say, here the partial derivative means a ratio of a change in price over an infinitesimal change in yield. With this in mind, let's begin our journey. Okay, let's start with a bond pricing formula, every student must be familiar with by now. If we assume annual compounding, and annual coupon, the formula will look like the following. Well, there is no need to explain this all over again, is there? This basically shows that the price of a bond is equal to the sum of the discounted values of annual cash flows up to the maturity date. And here, of course, n equals the time to maturity expressed in years. Now, if we assume semi-annual compounding, and semi-annual coupon instead, the formula will change slightly to the following. Please note that R, the YTM, is almost always expressed on a per annum basis. Therefore, the annual rate is divided by 2 in the denominator. Also note that, n, here in this semi-annual case, represents the total number of semi-annual periods up to maturity. Similarly, the bond pricing formula becomes what is shown here, if we assume quarterly compounding, and quarterly coupon. The annual rate here is divided by 4 in each period, with n representing the total number of quarters to maturity. So, how can we generalize these results? Well, it's not too difficult. The generalized formula is shown in the next slide. It doesn't look too scary, does it? Here, k represents coupon and compounding frequency. For example, in the semi-annual case, k equals 2, while in the quarterly case, k equals 4, etc. And ti introduced here, represents the time at which the cash flow i is received, expressed in years. For example, in the semi-annual case, t1 equals 1 half, t2 equals 1, t3 equals 1 and a half, and t4 equals 2. In the quarterly case, t1 equals 1 fourth, t2 equals 2 fourths or 1 half, t3 equals 3 fourths, and so forth and so on. On a side note, please be reminded that, in practice, there can be cases where the yield to maturity of a bond is calculated, without matching the coupon frequency with the compounding frequency. Exactly matching the two is just a textbook example, which does not always have to be followed by market practitioners. Next, let's revisit the definition of modified duration. Well, if you look at it, you will see that the only thing that is needed in the derivation of the modified duration formula is to find the expression for the partial derivative of p with respect to r. After that, you will only need to multiply it by negative 1 over p. Okay, let's do that together. So, this is the pricing formula. In order to make the differentiation process look a bit easier, let's first transform the division operation into a multiplication operation simply as follows. Simple trick isn't it? All that was done here was to take out the denominator, raise it to the power of minus 1, then multiply it by the numerator. Now, if you partially differentiate it with respect to r, it becomes like this. Are you with me, or are you lost? Ha ha. No worries even if you feel you're lost. I'll explain it one by one. First, minus k times ti, in parentheses, is simply a result of a power rule. You simply bring down the exponent as a coefficient, and put it in front. And then you subtract 1 from the original exponent, as shown here. Next, what do you do? You differentiate what's in the parenthesis with respect to r, and then multiply the whole thing by it. Here, if you differentiate what's inside the parenthesis, you get 1 over k. Also, please note that the ks here simply cancel out, simplifying the formula further to the following. Now, doesn't look too bad, does it? Let's do some more tricks to simplify it further. Okay, now let's rewrite this equation as the following. Do you see the simple trick applied here? I have transformed the addition of the exponents into multiplication of the numbers with those exponents. This is some simple math trick that you learn in high school, or maybe in junior high. The reason for doing this is to take this one out and put it in front of the summation sign, as the whole thing can be regarded as just a constant. Therefore, it can be placed in front of the summation sign, along with the minus sign before it. 
Okay, we are almost there now. Let's re-express this in terms of fractions, just for the sake of easier viewing. Hmm, nothing complicated so far. Now, let's look at the original definition of the modified duration of a bond. You can see that the final formula can be obtained by multiplying the partial derivative of p with respect to r by negative 1 over p. Okay, let's do that. The final formula for the modified duration of a bond is now shown inside the red rectangle at the bottom of the slide. Are you happy? Are you excited? This is the very formula that we have been searching for. Of course, given that we found the formula, we can stop here, but let's study one more minor topic that can be quite conveniently utilized later on. That is, the linkage between modified duration and Macaulay duration. Let's first take a look at the basic definition of Macaulay duration. Here, it can be seen that Macaulay duration is simply defined as the sum of all time weights times future cash flows discounted using the yield to maturity, which is then divided by P, the bond's price. Let's compare this to the modified duration formula that we have derived today. Hmm. Do you see it? The only difference between the two is that 1 over 1 plus r over k appears in front of the summation sign in the modified duration formula, but not in the Macaulay duration formula above. Therefore, we can conclude that modified duration equals Macaulay duration divided by 1 plus r over k. This basically means that if you simply discount the Macaulay duration metric using the rate r over k, then you can get modified duration. And this is why modified duration comes out a little shorter than Macaulay duration in normal circumstances. Wow, I guess that was a long journey. I should finish here. Before you go, please do not forget to like and subscribe. May God bless you all.